Hey guys, happy birthday, it's party time. No, I'm just kidding, but it feels like a birthday. Today we're gonna go over Streamlabs OBS. This is an easy setup guide. So unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably noticed Streamlabs released a version of OBS, which integrates the entire Streamlabs functionality or suite into the OBS interface. So this makes it really easy for you to have one window that really does it all. Um, with this, you can actually integrate all of your Streamlabs without needing to copy and paste into HTML browser sources. Everything's just really plug and play, super easy. There's also built-in widgets, and you can move them right around your screen. It really takes the guessing game out of everything and makes it so you can do everything in one place. They've also added face masks and audio filters so you can spice up your stream and make it fun for your viewers. There's also optimized video encoders, which can reduce your CPU usage by as much as 20% or you can go on with the same video or CPU usage but double the quality of your output that works for PUBG, League of Legends, Dota 2, CSGO, Destiny, Fortnite, and there's more to come. There's also some really great overlays that you can directly um, add to your stream so you can theme it up and make it look really cool. Um, the download link is right at the bottom. Uh, you'll go through the installation process. It'll take you right to the Streamlabs OBS site. You can click on download. Um, I already have it downloaded, so I'll bring it up um, to show you how easy the installation is. The download, I think, was about 240 some megabytes, so it's uh, it's a pretty small size. Now I'm running an NVMe SSD, so the installation's pretty quick, but it shouldn't take any more than 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, when the application first launches, it's going to allow you to uh, finish the process later, or if you want to get right into it, you can sign in through Twitch or your YouTube account. Next, it'll ask you to verify, and it'll take you right into the Streamlabs OBS interface once it's connected. Um, now, you'll have the opportunity to select what you want to bring forward from uh, Streamlabs itself, so what you want to connect. I don't really like the tip jar, so I'll probably remove that. But looking around, you can see that everything that is in your uh, Streamlabs account can directly be uh, added uh, right from the get-go. There is an optimization uh, that you can do with this as well. What it'll do is actually test your connection and optimize the OBS settings to uh, best match the connection you have. I'm not sure if it's using a Twitch service or, or uh, speedtest.net, um, but it'll essentially uh, test your download, upload, and uh, modify your settings to best fit. So you can see now that we're in the interface itself, it's already brought in my event list. So you see it's just an easy drag and drop interface. I can choose exactly where I want to show up on my Twitch stream. And I also have my notifications uh, imported already so I can choose exactly where I want that to go. Um, you can also do some tests with your Streamlabs. So um, you can either do it from the application, which I'll show you at the end of the stream, or uh, in this cer certain scenario, I have a web browser open on an alternate monitor. Um, which I'm using to just test and make sure that the notifications are displaying properly but also in the proper location um, on my stream. You can see along the bottom I'll show you your CPU usage, your frames per second, any sort of drop frames, the actual kilobytes you're using in your stream, and then on the far right side you'll see your different audio settings, so your desktop audio as well as your mic audio. Um, through the different filters and properties, you can actually change settings. But I found that out of the box, everything worked as intended, and I didn't really need to change anything. So I just left everything uh, checked or unchecked as is. Um, but you can see that there is quite a few customizations um, that you can add into here. Um, you can even add delays. So if you do notice that you know a webcam or your audio is a bit off cue, you can further sync that to uh, to work properly. The same sort of properties and filters are available on each individual source as well. Um, even places to add custom CSS, change the size of widgets, rename the widgets. Um, and you can use the drop down list to choose exactly uh, what sort of events or uh, components from Streamlabs that you'd like to adjust. Now I like to make it easy for people to get in touch with me. So I'm gonna add a browser source which allows me to use websites, third party widgets or HTML. Um, this one here, I'm actually going to use a local file. So I'm going to select HTML, but I'm going to check off the local file and I'm going to grab that file from my computer. Now this is some CSS from nerdedeye.com. They have a quick guide in order to set this up. It's really awesome. You guys should, should use it if you don't. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, so a big shout out to nerdedeye.com. I also use uh, their Destiny custom CSS for all of my uh, notifications that pop up in the middle of the screen as well. Again, I'll leave a link in the description for that too. 
Next, I'm gonna add my voice overlay from Discord. Now, if you're playing on PC, this is something that you might want to uh, check out. Um, but essentially what you do is go into settings, look at overlay, and then uh, choose in-game uh, overlay and just enable that. You can choose the avatar size, the display names, and display users. Um, so it's definitely something really cool that you can integrate into the stream. It's also gonna provide you um, with the URL. So all you have to do is copy and paste that URL into the box and you can refresh to see what that's going to look like. Um, what I'm going to do is actually uh, join into a, a party chat that I do have set up in Discord just so I can see my name pop up because I certainly want to know how big the actual avatar bubble is. So that's quite small. So I'm going to make a quick, couple quick adjustments and choose exactly where I want that to be. Um, we'll see. Oh no, this makes it look even smaller. So we're going to increase the size of that and uh, that should be great. Yeah, perfect. Next, I'm going to do some more Discord magic. And again, we're going to use the browser source. Again, it supports websites, third-party widgets, HTML, or local files. Um, but what I'm going to do here is actually add um, the Discord invite link to a Discord that I'm an admin of. Um, so what this allows me to do, and this is really great for streamers, if you've got your own community, um, you can actually use the overlay um, in this regard. So what I can do is have an icon, uh, the icon that's specifically for my Discord, the Discord name, the number of users that are online, and also the Discord link itself um, so that people can actually join. Um, so the invite link is gonna show right up on my stream. I'm gonna have that up at all times. Just a really cool feature that you can add in and uh, make sure that your Discord grows. So we've got some sources set up now. We wanna make sure they stay in position so I can go forward and I can lock any of these uh, particular sources. I can even drag and drop up and down with the rightmost icon. I can even make certain ones invisible if I'd like to by clicking the middle icon as well. Um, so very easy again to um, manage and, and keep those sources intact. Next I'm going to add my actual game capture. So the game capture feature you see here under the standard list doesn't really work with a lot of games. So you're going to want to use display capture and capture your specific display. Um, if you're going to be streaming from Xbox or PlayStation or, or a Wii or a third party device, you can use the video capture and you can stream um, from either, you know, an Elgato, Evermedia, Blackmagic, um, you can even select built in webcams as well. Um, so here I've actually added in uh, my source. You can see I'm going to kind of drag it down and you can see how the position on this list actually affects um, what's on top of each other. So it's almost like layers when you're using Photoshop or something of that nature. Next we're going to want to add a webcam so you can choose the video capture device and that's going to allow us to use a built-in webcam and again the capture cards that I mentioned. Um, so the Elgato, Avermedia, Blackmagic, or whatever capture card you're currently using. Um, what I'll do is just quickly name this one webcam and I'll select my device. Actually, it, auto, it automatically selected it for me, which is kind of cool. Um, so you can see the different settings that we have. Um, I'm just leaving mine at the resolution that my camera will do. You can see I have a green screen set up. I actually have the Elgato green screen. Best purchase I've made really for a green screen. Before that, I was using a green screen kit that I purchased on Amazon for about 150 bucks. It came with lighting and everything, but I certainly do like the Elgato green screen. Um, you can see that you can access your uh, camera functions, um, but what I want to do here is actually add some filters. So one thing I want to do is do some cropping. So I'm going to crop from the left, the right, the top, and the bottom to make sure that my webcam is only capturing the portions that I want it to. It also makes it a lot easier when we use the chroma key to remove the green to make sure that we're cutting off whatever uh, colors we don't need. Now the drop down list for additional um, filters is, uh, is pretty extensive so you can do a lot of things with OBS. It makes it very easy and customizable which I really like. The chroma key is automatically going to default to green, but I do have the ability to adjust the similarity, smoothness, spill reduction, contrast, brightness, and opacity, so it's super customizable. I'm going to adjust the size here and turn on my light just so that my webcam is a bit more uh, legible. So now that we have everything working, you can see at the bottom my mic levels up, so I unmuted my microphone. And I can also add in desktop audio. So I've got my Nightbot open, and you'll see that as soon as we start playing audio, the 
desktop audio bar will move as well. Um, I'm currently using the NCS release playlist, which is a free no copyright playlist. It's actually pretty good. I really like the playlist itself. Um, but you can see now that the desktop audio bar is running. Um, you can add filters and different things to this if you'd like. Um, so there is, you know, gain, noise suppression, noise gate, um, different things. So if you do uh, see some strange audio effects happening, uh, you can come in, you can do some different uh, audio customization filters here as well. Along the bottom you can go live, you can record locally, and you can also test your widgets. So I did want to come back to this as I mentioned it early on in the video, but any of the events that I have set up in Streamlabs um, can be triggered at the uh, very bottom with the uh, test widgets button. Now in OBS settings specifically, I do have the opportunity to change pretty much everything about my stream output. Um, I leave general basically the same. Um, under the stream section, um, I will choose a server that's closer to me. Um, for some reason, this is not selecting the most optimal server. I know when using XSplit, um, it will select the most optimal server, um, but it's very easy. All I have to do is click the drop down list and choose a server that's close to me. Next on the output screen, um, you can go with either simple or advanced mode. Um, I typically will go with advanced and I'll change some settings on my own, um, but it's really up to you. I'll typically stick with a video bitrate of about 3000, um, so about 3 megs a second is what uh, that will be consuming. Um, the video encoder, I typically will use the software encoder X264, um, but yet you can use the uh, NV, which is essentially using your NVIDIA video card. Um, I'll leave the bitrate for audio at 160. Um, and you can see some of the other settings that we do have available. Um, so there are quite a few customizations you can do. Um, if you do go to advanced, I would highly recommend keeping it on a controlled bitrate, which just shows up as a CBR. Next up are the global hotkeys, so it gives you the ability to bind keys to start and stop your stream. Any of the Streamlabs scene integrations that you've implemented can be shown or hidden. Um, you can also change any of the audio source settings that you have. So essentially the sources that you've added in OBS will now populate in here and you can control them with keyboard shortcuts. Now under advanced, I typically leave everything um, as it is. There's no reason to change anything here, but you can certainly change process priority or any sort of video settings. Um, if you're more advanced, you know what to do. Next is the overlays where you can import custom overlays and export overlays as well that you've created. Um, so you can add them right into your stream and then also um, enable notifications. Um, so very easy to um, implement and set up OBS, as you can see. Um, there's a lot of features and functions that you can choose and it's a very customizable experience. Next is the actual overlay library that a lot of people are probably excited about, the ability to quickly add or implement that. So you can search for overlays, you can look at the most installed, newly added, animated, static, included screens, um, and the include screens will allow you to narrow down to see ones that include live, be right back, offline streaming, or stream starting soon. You can also select colors or even the different types of first person shooters and so on. The one thing I did notice about this is they do load quite slow and I'm sure that's a bug that they'll patch quite quickly. Um, there's a ton of different uh, overlays you can choose from and I really like the ability to narrow down to exactly what you want. What's really cool about this is, you know, this would typically be some high level CSS that a lot of people don't know how to do or understand, but yet they want to bring some animation, customization, or interaction to their stream. They just don't know how to. So this is a, a very easy way to, to do that. Um, any of the different areas where it says, you know, add your name or, or what have you, you can just um, edit those text fields. So it's super easy to use really customizable. I'm really glad they did it. When you actually look at the overlays, you can see what's included in the particular kit, um, who created it, how many installs, what's included, and uh, again, you can further customize once you've actually uh, installed that onto uh, your OBS scene that you've created. Last but not least is your ability to actually access your 
Streamlabs dashboard right through the program, so it makes it super easy. Well guys, that takes us to the end of the video. I hope you got a lot out of it. Hope I helped you uh, set up your own stream through OBS. Leave a like, hit subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.